everyone and thank you so much for joining me live in my kitchen. Um, a really exciting um, 20 minutes, half an hour kind of planned. I'm Hayley, Nothing's your help. planned. Nothing's planned. <laughs> Professional chef, prep with a throat, nothing's planned. No, I am Hayley, your health angel, and I am extremely um, happy and pleased to introduce into my kitchen, John Pickley. Hey, how you doing Facebook? Facebook Hi. Live. Um, so John has kindly offered to come into the kitchen and cook us a fantastic meal and show us some of the um, kind of top kitchen tips that he uses in his kitchen that we can actually transfer into our own home kitchens to make life easier for us all. We all like life to be a lot easier. <laughs> Absolutely, especially you know those kind of working mums, working kind of parents, working people in general, absolutely. John, so yeah. absolutely. Now, when John had initially agreed to come into the kitchen, yeah. I was firstly given it, yay! But I've also said, can you, I kind of challenge you to make sure that the meal that you make um, follows the recipe high five concept, which as you all know is five ingredients, yep. five easy to follow steps to a simple, healthy yep. and tasty meal. Yeah, absolutely. So I know your meal's going to be tasty, so the yep. challenge will be kind of the whole kind of quick, the quickness yeah. um, of it all. So my, the challenge was the five, ingredients, the, five, the five basic ingredients that you might have in your store cupboard as well, yeah? Yes, absolutely. And to me, my go-to dish is actually a risotto. You know, it's like a pasta or a couscous dish. It's one of these dishes that are good starting points and then you can just keep embellishing and embellishing upon you know, once you master the technique. Yep. So risotto is a very basic technique. It's basically cooking a rice dish out with stock. Um, then you can add to it. And so the rice was my number one. Right. Okay. okay. Uh, number two were the veggies. So most of these veggies are kind of trimmings, leftovers, bits and bobs that you might have mm -hmm. in the bottom of the fridge. Which is perfect, and I love that. Use leftovers, so totally. there's no waste, you're always using everything yeah. else. This yeah, this isn't a dish actually that, to be honest, I would plan. You know, this is a dish in the house that I would say, what have I got? It's that kind of thing. It's not yes. so much a planned dish, it's more of a, what have we got in the store cupboards. Perfect. I so, like so get veggies number two. Yeah. Yeah, and what we've got is we've got some spinach. I've got, actually, a, in the recipe, you posted online, we had frozen peas, which I'm sure we've got in the freezer anyway. Yep. But I had some green beans, blanched off mm -hmm. from dinner last night, so we'll use them. I've got some leek and i got some onion. I've got some stock, number four. Mm -hmm. I'm a number, no, that's number three. <laughs> number three is the stock. This is stock. Okay, we'll come back to that. Number four is the butter. A wee bit of a luxury item. Yeah. Uh, and number five is the parmesan. Perfect. Again, good parmesan, maybe a wee bit of a luxury item. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so before we get started, though, can I please just ask you all, to share the broadcast, that's easily done. If you just look down at the bottom um, kind of left of the screen, there's a little share button. Just hit that just now and that'll share in your news feeds. That'll be um, absolutely great. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, as John's cooking and doing all the hard work, I'm just going to be sitting the Can I change? <laughs> Can I change? Um, I'm going to be keeping a track on any comments that are coming in, any questions as well. So please feel yeah. free to kind of ask away. Fire away if it's not related to this dish or you know any other culinary questions that you need, you know? Culinary? Culinary? culinary. <laughs> so um, nothing to do with your uh, celebrity chef today? Status, today. yes. Listen, if anybody wants to know what you know Tina Turner's favourite you know breakfast was or did Guns N' Roses actually eat anything at all, then please feel free to, to ask away. But that can all come out in the course of the, 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 the morning. Fantastic. John, so, do you want to just explain what you're doing? So, so John yeah. is going to be making for us um, a risotto from a Yeah. Um, and like you say, you've just kind of used any kind of uh, leftovers and anything bits and else, bits and bobs in the kitchen yeah. as well. So. Like I say, this isn't, a, this isn't one of my planned dishes. This is a dish that we use, you know, by... It actually came out of the kitchen in the restaurant. So we've always got rice, so we've always got risottos in the kitchen and, um, and red onion. That's my restaurant, by the way. At Red Onion Glasgow, if you want to go to our Facebook page. A, or Red Onion Glasgow on the Twitter or Red Onion 1963 on Insta. So um, yeah, it's it's a cornerstone of my kitchen risotto. It's a, it's it's like anything, it's, it's always there, you know. And yeah. it can be it, once we do what we do is we make a very basic vegetable base, and then from that vegetable base for risotto, you can then add to it. So it could, if you want to get a fish risotto, maybe some tomato, some crayfish, you've got a fishy. Yeah. Tomato crayfish risotto, smoked parrot, add that to it. So you can always add things to it and make it something completely different, right? Yeah. So yeah. this is basically what you call the starting point of any risotto, it's called the sofrito, right? And that's your frying whatever the vegetables that are going to enhance the flavour of the finished dish. Now, this is onion and leek simply because we've got them, yes. right? Perfect. And it could just be onion, it could just be leek, but every risotto pretty much has to start with a vegetable base. Now, if this was, for example, a like a big meaty one, like a, like an Italian sausage risotto. Yeah. You might use celery, carrot, garlic, bigger flavours. 
that will carry the big flavours, right? Yes, uh -huh. So, um, so I, did, I did, uh, have a question coming in from Heather who asked, you know, could you use frozen onions for, for speed? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely fine, yeah. And in the restaurant environment, we will always have onions peeled and chopped. Yep. You know, we're talking about preparation, delegation, organisation. Yes. Uh, but preparation is key, obviously, in everything. And the reason this works in the restaurant is because we've always got these diced vegetables on hand, ready to go, yeah. you know, so what you don't want, and what I think a lot of people imagine is in the restaurant environment is like when a, a check comes on for a risotto, we go to the cupboard, we get an onion, we peel it, we chop it, and then we start frying it. It's not how it works. Do you know, John, and it's a huge, huge message of mine because, you know, the whole prep like a pro kind of it comes from that. It's, yeah. it's all about kind of prepping all your ingredients in advance, uh, very much like a professional kitchen, just so that it's there. Yeah. So if you can have, have it all chopped, have it all prepared, and have it already and planned, um, and it's already in your uh, fridge. Your mise en place, as we call it in the restaurant business. Mm -hmm. And I just say, you know, it's all shoved in the fridge, it's kind of ready to come out. Um, it's just so much easier when you're ready for it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, you, and you know, when I make a big, kind of big play of that, I have a free guide at the moment, you know, the three step guide to getting organised in the kitchen. It's all about that planning your week ahead, you know, prepping your ingredients, um, and making sure everything's actually ready for you. Yeah, 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 it's key. But I see that you've, on, you've, you've moved on to stage two, which is to add the risotto. Yes, yeah. to so add the rice, nice. yeah. Um, <clears throat> and by the way, frozen onions do really work in this, and I, we keep them in our fridge in the house, you know. So if we want to make like a, a soup or something that's there, it's yeah. ready to go, you know. So yeah, the next stage is what you call the toast tatura. And this is the toasting of the rice, and this is kind of another crucial part of a risotto making. So you could make risotto just by boiling rice in stock, but that would just be boiled rice, okay? Yes. So to make a risotto, you have to fry the rice. And what you're doing there is that you're just giving it a nice light toasting, yes. and that's just going to impart another layer of flavour into the actual risotto. And when it's ready, you know when it's ready, when I, you probably you won't be able to see, but you get a nice sort of opaque ring around the rice. Yeah, okay? see that, yeah. That's it fried. But what you don't want to do is colour it, you don't want to brown it, you're not, so, you're not actually colourising anything yeah. here. So you just want to start lightly, gently soak it, all right? Yeah. So once that's been soaked up, at this point, if it was a toasted up, if it was a fishy risotto, mm -hmm. then I'd have add a bit of white wine, if it was a meaty risotto, a bit of red wine, but it's just going to be straight veggie, so we're just going to start adding stock. Okay, okay? perfect. So, you put your stock there. I've got, yeah, stock cube. This is just a regular, low salty stock cube. Okay. I don't know, you get any preferences yourself? Well, I usually use, I, I, well, actually, I usually use, use um, McMone stock. Right, So exactly, I'm a bit yeah. of making a bone broth, um, uh -huh, a uh -huh. lot of nutrients and that. But for quickness, I sometimes use bouillon, which is the marigolds. Yeah, which um, is great. Yeah. Uh -huh. Slightly expensive, I think, bouillon. Yes, it is. But um, it, is, it is a wonderful uh, product, it's a great flavour. And I would use, in the restaurant, we'll use, we'll make fresh stocks, obviously. Yes. But vegetable stock's a tough one, I think, to get the flavours right. You know, tough. to get the de depth of flavour for something like a risotto, uh -huh. you know, it's, it is quite hard. I mean, these, these, these stock cubes contain, not well, yeast extracts and, you know... Some of them do, yeah. So, I always say that, you know, if you're buying any kind of stock cubes out there, just check the ingredients. Yeah. And it's a big message of mine, always check the ingredients. If you're not making it yourself, you know, I'm not, you know, if you are buying something, that's fine. Just make sure you're not buying something that you don't want, you know... The ingredients, there's, there's no nasties in there, no heavy nasties. Absolutely. So, so what would you classify that then? Like, you know, what, what should you be looking out for? So no. make sure there's no kind of any added sugars, preservatives, right. salts. Salts. Yeah, you know, any added salts that's, that, that's um, kind of not really kind of necessary. Just, these are the hidden ones, aren't they, that you just don't see? Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yep. Yes. So, but like you say, it can be difficult, isn't it? Especially with a, a veggie kind of dish as well. And then it's the volume the of the stock, you've got yeah. to hold that, you know. See in the restaurant we make like a beef or a, or a chicken stock, you can reduce that down and it's almost like, like a like a stock cube but liquid form. Yes. So it's in a reduction form so it's easier to sort of, you know, hold it in your fridges as well. But a vegetable stock you can't do that with, you can't get a reduction on it. Um, so stock cubes do work for this but like you say, just watch out what you're buying. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And I love that you've kind of kept it uh, meat free as well. I recently did a, a kind of a vegan for five days. Right, how did that go? Myself. It was great, John. Yeah. I really enjoy just kind of looking. What did the family at, think? Well, actually, <laughs> my husband, who's behind the camera, um, joined me actually in the meat-free meals, and he actually really enjoyed it. Being such a big meat eater, really, um, right? He didn't, okay. he didn't actually miss um, the meat <clears throat> of it. Yeah, yeah. If I'd said, "Listen, we're going vegan," he might just kind of go, "Hold on a minute, I don't think so." Did you but just like, creep up on him? Yeah. <laughs> it was actually him that um, offered to join me, so I thought, "Oh, that's great." A bit okay. Of but I've just going through that process as well. 
you, you know, and I'm aware that more and more people like to eat meat free. They might not be vegetarian or they might not be um, vegan full time, sure. but to have that meat free, and I think it's really important when you're thinking of your vegetables that you do make sure that you get that kind of plant based protein. You know, in my you know, nutritional therapy background, it's all about getting the most amount of kind of nutritional punch into your meal. Um, and the mix of vegetables you've got there are great, yeah. you know, because you've got all that, you've got the plant based protein, you've got the iron, the, you know, all the. You all the, yeah, all the yeah, yeah, yeah. Without even the thought, you know, sometimes it's actually quite hard to come up with like six or seven meat dishes a week anyway. Yes. Without boring the life out of the family. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. And I, you, like my kids, they'll go through phases of, you know, yes, we love chili con carne. Oh, but I really like chili con carne anymore, Dad, you know, or, you know, they'll move on to the next thing. <laughs> so you're constantly challenged, and that's why I love a meat free day. I mean, I think, I think it's a great idea. One or two a week is even is brilliant. And look, this is meat free. But it's not a dish that you would say, hey, you know what, Dad? There's no meat in it, you know? Because yes. you, you would notice it's like a pasta, it's like a, you know, like a marinara or something like it's that. Perfect, it's yeah. perfect, yeah. So at this stage, when do you know then, John, when to add more kind of stock in? Well, it's, 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 well the, the whole point of the dish is that we're trying to absorb all this flavour into the rice. Yep. Okay, so you're constantly absorbing and reducing and condensing the flavour in the rice. So I think the, uh, you know when it begins to just like dry up, basically. Yeah. You know, when you see that the, it gets a bit sort of dry in the pan, that's when it's ready. Okay. At this point, it's almost a kind of sort of porridgey consistency. And that's the kind of consistency I like to keep it at. I mean, that, there is a ratio of stock to rice with, with the Oreo, right, with uh, making risotto. risotto. But I, basically, I always have more rice than the recipe calls for. Right, okay. okay, so always have more rice because you can always add, but it's really hard, uh, and I'll explain why, to stop the cooking process and, and then put more rice, right, more, okay. more stock into it. I'm just going to try and see if there's any kind of questions coming in. I've got a wee oh, nod from my husband there, but I don't think it's coming through as quickly on my... Okay. All right, so Michelle has just come in. Hi, Michelle. Michelle actually just went straight across the road. So All right, she's looking out the window. She can, <laughs> actually, Michelle, you can just pop straight over and ask your question. But Michelle is asking, do you keep, cook this in a high or a medium heat or what, you know, what's the... Well, this is the question I was going to say, actually. See, the stock and the, the risotto should be at the same temperature. Both should be at a kind of nice rolling simmer, I call it. I've yes. got it quite high right now, actually, just to reduce the stock. Just to reduce it, yeah. But yeah. It, they, 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 they have to be the same temperature. Because all the time you're adding hot stock to the rice, you're keeping the cooking process rolling along. Of course, okay, if so that's cold, you're going to really cool the dish right down. You're, going, you're, going, to, you're, going, to, you're going, to going to slow down the cooking process, and it gets technical then, because then what you're doing is going to, the protein start to reset in the rice. Right. So imagine when you're making mashed potato, right, and the phone rings, and then somebody's at the door, and you come back to it, and it's going to be a bit cold, yes. right, and then you mash it, and it's all sludgy. Uh -huh. That's because the protein is... really gloopy? Yeah, that gloopy way. And what you don't get is that nice fluffy, creamy texture. Yeah. You get that gloopy texture. So that's a great tip then, mashed potatoes then. So oh, don't let them cool. Don't Never. let them cool. Well, once you've, once you've drained them, mash them. Right. If you can, then you can always reheat them in your microwave and get them up to temperature. Yeah. And they always add hot butter as well. Okay, they'll always have nice creamy mash. So yeah, so these have got to be the same temperature the whole time. Okay. Now in the restaurant, this is about half, two thirds cooked at the moment. Yes. We would take this off now. Okay, so this is actually a tip for, for you know for cooking in the house as well. Take it off, put it on a lot a large flat tray, lay it as flat as you can, right. and get it cooled down as quick as you can. Because okay. there's a lot of you know th there are issues regarding like you know food poisoning with with rice dishes. Okay. Yeah. But that only comes as you'll know when you let your when you when you start to cool the rice and it's not completely cool, yeah. then you reheat it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so when you're cooking rice and you want to cool it and then reheat it, you've got to cool it completely, right? Yeah, Down to like right. fridge temperature yes. and as quick as possible, like half an hour, right? So get it as cool as possible and then you can reheat it, okay? What you don't want to do is like cool it down to an ambient temperature and then reheat and it. Then okay, that's it. dangerous. Yeah. Okay, so at this point we would take it off, cool it down completely, and that's you got your risotto half cooked, ready to go. So we got to check Perfect. on the restaurant. It takes seven to eight minutes to make it rather than 20. So in a restaurant when it says, allow 20 minutes made to order, take that as 40, okay? <laughs> so, okay. so I'm going to add more stock at this point. Just, just uh, yeah, no, great. And stock-wise, um, Claire has just added a comment there as well. Yes, I had, have heard of the kale. That's what I use as well. Yeah. The organic stock cubes, yep, and it's very kind of low in salt, gluten-free, yeah. and it's organic as well. So. I, think, I think low salt's the key. <laughs> Absolutely. I yes. think that... Uh, when, whenever you're making whatever it is, a super stewer casserole, and I enhance most things, you know, that I'm like a stewer casserole with a stock cube. 
just for flavour. Uh, and I think low salt is key because then that allows you to control how you're going to season it. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So is this a dish that uh, you made for any of your um, celebrity kind of chef tasties? Well, yeah, I mean, did Brian Adams like? Brian uh, Adams loved risotto. This was this is actually his right. go-to dish. Right, this okay. and baked potato. Baked potato. So for five years, I was Brian Adams' private chef. Hi, Brian, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm sure you won't mind me saying. But Brian was a vegan who actually didn't like vegetables, which was, to put it bluntly, quite a challenge. Yes. Right? So, uh, but he liked carbs, right? And that was the thing. He so didn't like vegetables, he was a vegetarian that didn't like vegetables. A vegan who didn't like vegetables. A vegan that didn't <laughs> like vegetables? Oh my goodness, that must have been some challenge for you. It was incredible, actually, at times. Because, well, at the end of the day, you cook for, you're paid to cook for what he wants to eat, yes. right? Yes, there's, there's times when you're concerned about, oh, I'm not sure you're getting the right nutrient, blah, 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 blah. He didn't, I don't think he cared. He didn't seem to care about it, you know, so anyway. The only vegetable he did enjoy was peas, which was great, because I love peas too, right? right? So we had a fantastic, fantastic pea time with Brian. <laughs> <laughs> but one of my own expressions. Anyway, yeah, so he loved risotto, but just plain risotto, and it was the marigold stock that he loved. Right, okay. Uh, so I carried stocks of that across the world with me actually. Cases full of it. I think I can I think I created that company okay. actually. So Brian would have a we would love a risotto. But you know, when I was cooking for him, <coughs> you're a private chef, you're traveling the world, you're moving in and out of hotels, yeah. in and out of gigs, you're on planes and trains and automobiles. I uh, so you need to be able to sort of adapt and adjust to your environment like that. Oh absolutely you know? yeah. and so you, and if he said he felt like this, then you had to find it. Now fortunately he was quite Quite plain in the way he ate. So rice and stock, they were easy things for me to carry. Yeah. And I could knock that anywhere, you know, like I say, I'm going to train an automobile yeah, or whatever, you know. So, tough, yeah. um, but it was exciting times because I got to see the world. Uh, which, which is I, amazing, what an opportunity. Yeah, for any chef, any cook, anybody yeah. who wants to really get into food, I think you've got to actually feel it, see it at first hand, you know, whether it's a pad thai in beach in Bangkok, you know, like a pad thai in Phuket. Or whether it's a risotto in Milan, or yep. you've got to experience it first hand, but you know the real deal really authentically. And then you get a grasp of what you're cooking, I think, you know. So that's Absolutely. why I think it really helps. Right, so we've got another question coming in from Mandy. Mandy, thank you very much for your question. Mandy's actually my fabulous sister in law. But she has asked, uh, can you use any sort of risotto rice? No, Is there great anything question. you recommend? Great question. So there are three types of risotto rice that are available in the supermarkets right now, in yep. delis in general. Mm -hmm. Unless you've got a good specialist Italian deli. Um, so the main one that we see a lot of is Arborio, yes. uh, which is the fino, right? The fino is just the size, it's not the grading, it's not. It's just the size, so there's fino. Then you've got a, a, a carnaroli, which is super fino, so that's the bigger grade, right, okay. Okay, which obviously takes longer to cook. Yeah. And that's so why what have you used here today? So this is Arborio. Arborio? Arborio. Arborio. Yeah, Arborio rice. Arborio rice is the most common, to me it's the best, it's the most versatile. Yep. I think the bigger the grain, the more stock it takes on. Sometimes you get too much of a creamy, a creamy result as well. Uh, and then there's another small one, which is Via Nono Nano, which you'll see in stocks and soups and the proper any yeah. sorts, casseroles and things yeah. like that. So that that's not, doesn't make so much of a risotto. So they're the three main ones, but if you've ever actually travelled across northern Italy, it's the most amazing thing. You'll just suddenly come across all these paddy fields of rice. Yeah. So when the Alps melt down in the, you know, in the, in the spring, uh -huh. they create the perfect paddy fields. And that's where the, the rice is grown. And in actual fact, in that part of northern Italy, you'll find about a dozen or more varieties of rice you can use for risotto. Um, but it's just arborio and carnaroli, really, that are being processed. There is another one Jamie uses. Oh, somebody, will, somebody out there tell me what it's called. It's got a funny name, like Bimba Bumba Bamba. Something like that. Is that made up or is that actually? No, no, no. It's a real thing. It's a real... Jamie uses a specific rice. And uh, again, it's a really big fat grain of rice. It takes yep. a lot of stock to cook. Right. So, so a boil, so and, and always stick to the same rice because okay. because you'll always then have the same ratio of stock. You'll always know when you're ready. Yeah. You know, if you start mixing up the size of the grain, you're gonna have to start mixing up the time of the, the cooking process and the and the amount of stock and all that. Right. Okay. So I've got a question in from Hazel. Hi, Hazel, and she is asking, do you need to keep stirring it? Does it stick easily? Yeah. I do see you flipping and stirring, but it is sitting as well. Yes, so you've got to now again key. It's a great question, this guy is doing really good. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Well, we've got John here. Well, you, you forget the basics while you're cooking. You know? Yes, absolutely. After 30 years of doing it, you forget the very basic things. Like, yeah. start with the pot. Okay, so for me, a risotto pot has to be a nice, white-based, heavy bottom pot. Okay. Okay, because then you get a lovely, even heat. 
But if you're making a risotto in a pot like that, yeah. you're constantly digging in and round uh -huh. and moving and transferring that heat, right? Because everything's got to be cooking at the same time. Yes. So when you get something nice and white based like that, the, the heat that transfer yeah. evenly across it. Perfect. Um, what was the question again? It was. You need to keep stirring in the Yes. So it, it will stick, right? Again, this is a non-stick pot, right, okay. uh, which is great. Um, but it will stick. So yes, I do keep moving it. But the other reason you, you're stirring and moving is because you're just kind of breaking up the grain slightly, and you're releasing that lovely starch, and that's the key. There's a wee bit left there. So you can see actually in the bottom of the bowl, that's a powder. It is. Uh -huh. It's quite powdery. Yeah. That's, that's the starch. Yep. Okay. okay. It's a talcum. It's called a talcum. And that's what makes the risotto creamy. That's that gives it that final result. Right. So right. rather than buying, you know, a processed rice, yes. you know, when it's thoroughly washed and it's non-stick, you don't want that. You want the stick. You know, it's like yeah. making sticky rice, sushi rice, that kind of thing. You want that stickiness. You want that that, that starchy uh, um, texture, and that's what makes the the risotto creamy ultimately. So it's a combination of the moving, you know, moving the risotto around, just sort of loosely breaking up of the grain, releasing that starch, and the fact that it comes that way, that, that may sort of yeah. start to And it's just time as well, isn't it? And yeah. And that time to, to, for it to do its stuff. Absolutely. It? So I'm just, got, I'm conscious now that we're actually getting to the, the end of the cooking process, because the rice has got to be just a wee bit al dente. In fact, some people say, you know, it should almost be like rice set in a sauce, you know? If your risotto rice is stodgy, you yes. know, then you, you, you've overcooked it, that's, that's a problem. What the effect is, in Italian, they call it the alla onda, right? Mm -hmm. And alla onda means wave, and see when you just kind of flip it, it's just like a wee wave crashing in the beach. I can see you that, see I don't that? know if you can see that at all. Um, and, and you know, Hazel has come back to say, you know, that's great, but how much stock do you add to the pan um, okay. at each stage? Is it, you know, is it a technical kind of... No, there's nothing, I don't... I, when, they, when you're adding, there, there, there will be packet instructions, okay, <laughs> as to the amount of stock to rice, okay, yes. and they do vary, I mean all recipes vary, but our recipe online has that, that ratio, like I say, always have more stock in your pot, because you might, you, you, could you always, might need more, you yeah. might need some more, you know when it's ready, when it just, it just absorbs, and you see the surface, you can see the rice, you yeah. see that, yeah, so I can. I can add, the, I'll add stock, and then that'll absorb, the wee pot holes appear, and then you can actually start to see the rice, yeah. To me, that means start adding a bit more. Yeah, because it's but then absorbed you get, into the rice yeah. then, isn't it? But it's then you get to the crucial part, is when you stop adding it. Yes. Okay, so that is, that, that's a trial and error thing. That's, that's, that's pretty much a, there's no given, there's no written law about that, I think. You just feel it, you just know when it's ready. Yeah. Okay. You might need Italian blood in you, I don't know. <laughs> I certainly don't, <laughs> but um, you know, after 30 couple of years of making risotto, okay. I pretty much know when to stop cooking it. Taste a bit, you know, taste, taste is that, a bit. And is this, is this one of your kind of favourite dishes? Is this something that you would normally make for yourself? I love sure. it, yeah. I've got, you know, it's 20 minutes. Don't, you know, you're you standing over a stove for 20 minutes, basically, you know. Taste it now? Yeah, taste yeah. it now, yeah. Um, so it's like, there is a level of love element about it, but I love that, 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 that way of cooking. Yeah, yeah. So what's the most kind of obscure meal that you've had to make then? Oh, well, when I cook for Guns N' Roses, they had mm. some very strange requests. Most of it can't be broadcast, but... No, it's a family show, no, it's not there. Show. It's a family show. But, um, Taste that actually, it's really absorbed into the rice and it's the flavour. The flavour of the rice, yeah, nice yeah. and delicate. And the Absolutely. rice is quite sweet as well. Mm -hmm. It's that sweetness to that. That's the kind of natural yeah. starchness. Yeah, Guns N' Roses, you know, if you were in Stockholm, for example, they would say, let's get some reindeers. And that night you would have like a dozen reindeers on spits and a car park outside the gig. No, my goodness. Yes, and they... Uh, and then they would come off stage and fall asleep anyway, you know, and then wake up at four in the morning and the roadies would have eaten all the reindeer. Oh my goodness! So, <laughs> some adventures with guys like that. Um, reindeer not, though? Wow. Not so much what I've cooked, but you know, on my travels, um, it's what I, I, I ate as well. And, you know, I'm very, very adventurous eater. And yep. No matter where I was in the world, I ate street food. That's the, you know, and for 10 years I've travelled the world. I never got, I've only got sick once, and that was a spaghetti bolognese in, in, in Mumbai. I mean, serves me right, you know what I mean? Serves me right. Things, that's it. Serves me right. Um, so, you know, I, for me, it was, a, cook, it was, a, it was a, a cook's tour of the world, really, you know, and I was always looking for the, the, the very weird and the very wonderful. And, uh, yeah, I, so, you know, nothing, nothing faced me. Maybe now, you know, I might be a bit different, 
But uh, I was a very adventurous young cook and I was adventurous with what I ate. So. Now Hazel is from Mag and, and I do know what you mean because you know when you are a chef, a professional chef, you know, feeling when something's ready is is, is fine, but you know when you are a novice, yeah. then but you know if you aren't sure, just do what we did there, you know, I took a wee taste of it just to see. And, and you can actually what we should have said was that was still a wee bit al dente. Yep, yep, it was still a little bit al dente. And um, so I always encourage stock. Yep, a bit more stock. And I always encourage that when people are cooking even at home, you know, before you serve it off, just taste it. Taste a wee bit of it. And um, if you think actually it needs a bit more salt, you know, add a bit more salt, if it needs a bit more cooking. And, and that's the whole, you know, that's a, that's the best tip I can provide. Yeah, yeah. Um, is to keep to keep doing that. Well, what you, the, the two key things are for the risotto is okay. One, it's still nice and sort of fluid. Yes. Okay, like the aloe under, like we said. So it's got a nice sort of creamy and fluid texture. Yeah. And the rice should just be cooked, just cooked, teeny bit al dente. Because you don't want to mush it, do you? No, that's the thing. But that was, it. like we said, that was just a wee bit al dente. Yes. So we added a bit more stock. I think we've got it now back to where we want it to be, so... Yeah, I think now, we'll take that off the heat. It's still nice and floppy. Yeah. And this is what you call, well, we're going to have our ingredients, <laughs> the rest of our high fives. Okay. Yes, of the, yep, the, the vegetables. It's our vegetables, so like I so said... So this is the best time to do it then? Just yeah, the but these are greens. So they don't need any cooking. Some of them are cooked. The green beans, like I said, they're left over, so they're cooked already. Yeah. Right, so these just need to be folded in, that's all. Could you use frozen peas? Would you yes. put frozen peas in at this time as You well? would put frozen peas in at this right. point okay. as well. Absolutely. Okay. And I love that because you're taking it off the heat now, so what you're basically doing is you're just melting down the spinach. Yeah. You're actually not cooking the vegetables. You're too not much. cooking out any nutrient. No, again, like at the end of the day, all the as much nutritional value as possible, yeah. which is perfect. Risotto is like a super, like a stew or a casserole. You actually, you're always retaining the vegetable. Yeah. You know, that's the, the nutrient. Yes. So, like when you boil broccoli, and I keep saying this, you know, or boil potatoes, and you, you just throw that water out, that's a big waste because most of the nutrients has gone, isn't it? Yeah. So, this is, this is why, that's why soup is so good for you because all that nutrient is retained in, 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 in yeah. the, the broth, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. So, and I suppose that's why, even when I uh, steam vegetables, I use the tiniest, tiniest amount of water. Yes. So, and steam it kind of really gently, and that will retain as much nutritional value into your vegetables as possible, and make sure also your vegetables are always a wee bit kind of that al dente, yeah. but still. They've got to be green. If they're not green, you're doing something wrong, I think. <laughs> If it's not green, it's gone off. Yeah. So, it's gone off. so, so you can't make a risotto it? without finishing it off with what you call the manticura. Mm -hmm. And this is what you get, this, the finishing luxurious creamy textures. Yeah. And unfortunately yeah. that comes from butter. So if you're on an LBE for Christmas, then forget it, right? But you know, Go and I always say, of course, and I always say, you know, butter is a healthy saturated fat. And we need those healthy fats. Okay. And especially... So this is what people want to hear. Yeah. And the thing is, it's so true. And especially for that, make sure it's a really good quality butter. So make sure it's grass-fed, organic, a really good um, quality of butter because uh -huh. that healthy fat is kind of really needed because a lot of those vegetables, John, has got a lot of um, fat-soluble vitamins and you're actually needing that fat, you know, with the olive oil you use at the start and a bit of that butter to help that get absorbed into the body. So it's really important that okay. that is there. So don't be scared of it and don't be scared of those... Um, those kind of healthy fats. Yeah, good, good. That's what you really want to hear, people. Yeah, and right, it's... Because I think there's too many diets out there that just take you the other way and go to the extremes, oh, don't they? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You, you know? just end up just eating the other Because the high five isn't really a diet, is it? Oh, it's not, absolutely not I a think diet, John. Clarify that. It's all it? about eating healthy. It's all about ditching the diet. Ditch it's all about diet, ditching exactly. the diet and just get back to eating whole, real, nutritious food. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, and that's important. But um, yeah, I saw that you kind of grated some parmesan in there as well. I did, yes, some nice parmesan, good fresh parmesan. I mean, the thing about parmesan is again, it's an expensive ingredient, but for me it's one of these ingredients that goes a long way, yes, so absolutely. just a little of it imparts so much flavour, and it keeps forever as well in your fridge. And uh, you grate right, buy it in a chunk if you can. Go to that. Just, yes, and please buy it in a chunk because um, I won't mention any names, but you'll know who you are. Um, if you buy it already, the kind of powdered, yes. uh, you will, and I know you don't really like uh, parmesan, Mandy, mm. but you know, that is where you get the really kind of smelly feet kind of smell, yeah, yeah, but in yeah, a yeah. real parmesan block like that, you don't, get, you don't have that. There's, don't have really that no, there's a wee cheesy odour of it when you grate it, but otherwise it's fine. Yep. And we yep. use the rind for everything, okay? So, right, that's you a know, good tip. When you, when you actually grate right down to the rind, you we put that in your stocks and, and, uh, 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 and soups and stuff like that. And a minute it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. Yep, that is perfect. And it that's cooks out and then you just take it out at the end. Okay. Or if you've got a really good food processor, you can grind that down as well. Right, okay. And, well, that, and use it like parmesan. It's just right, parmesan. I see. Well, if you watch, uh, you know, 
There's an Italian restaurant in town and they use a, a, a sandblaster to, uh, as a grinder, I'm not very technical in that respect, to actually to, to get the it. most out of the rind. Yeah. yeah. So you do not chuck the rind out. That's, and if you are buying it, buy it in a piece. And if you've got the, the time and inclination, go to a cheesemonger and buy it and give it and take, say to the guy, I want that amount, you know? Yeah, so. that's perfect. I've just got a comment in there from Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. Hazel's asking, do either of you do cooking workshops? Yes, I, I don't, but you do, John. I do, yes. John does cooking workshops. Yeah, and in, uh, in the Tennis Training Academy, we um, we have a cooking school. It's actually a great training academy in general. Yeah. Uh, and in the evenings and other times, they have leisure classes as well, and I take quite a few leisure classes. This year, we're going to launch, actually, next week, I think it's going to launch something quite exciting with them. It's oh, a, right. it's, it's the Tennis Market Kitchen, if you like, or... I haven't really got the name for it yet, but, but John's Saturday morning market kitchen. Mm. So the vibe is we're going to meet some. We're going to meet at the Well Park Brewery in Tennis, an iconic brewery, uh, on a Saturday morning early. We're going to go on a market tour. Now that could be the Glasgow Fish Market, it could be the Fruit and Veg Market. That sounds good. Yeah. yeah, and then we're going to we're going to gather our ingredients for the dish that we're going to do. And then we head back to the brewery. Mm -hmm. You have a beer tasting, guys uh, and girls. I think everybody's really sold in that. Thing. <laughs> That's it. So we have That's a beer it. tasting. Uh, and then we make the dish. I demo the dish, so you have a master class. Mm -hmm. um, and so, for example, the first one will be the ultimate fish and chips. And we're this is targeting a lot of the tourist market as well. Okay. You know, um, now it's not always on message fish and chips, right? But it's it's a fun thing to do. This. Uh, so you go to the fish market. You get the hustle and the bustle of the fish market. You know, you catch, you prepare, find your fish, bring it back, make the ultimate fish and chips. So it's just a fun day. I love that. It's just getting back to basics as to, you know, this is where all your kind of food comes from. It's whole food. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. always come, you know, mushed up packet. already and, you know, coated in, in, in breadcrumbs. Totally. So, you know, and it's great. It's just getting back to basics, isn't it? It's getting back to basics, but it's making the connection, isn't it? And yeah, I think people absolutely. love the idea of that. They like the idea of the journey of the food. Yes. You know? Yeah. And, and I love that as well. And I it, well, more and more people want to know that. That's what it's about now. You know, it's about provenance. It's about traceability. Yes. You can't, in a restaurant business, you can't just like throw, you know, piece of salmon on the grill and say they and give me fifteen pounds for that. But if people want to know, okay, you're charging me fifteen pounds, where did it come from? If, you know, assuming it's fresh, but they want to know the background, the details, you know, the backstory is the same the X Factor yes, to, to, to that piece of salmon. And it's crucial now, you know, we're all so aware of what we eat. Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know? I love that. So that looks absolutely amazing. Yeah. Is it ready? Is we're it ready, ready, yeah. We yeah, have one that we eat. Is that, that okay sitting there? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Yeah, that's cool right okay. down. That's absolutely perfect. So, unfortunately... That's my lunch now. <laughs> yeah. Well, you saw what we, we, we've made enough for a family of four easily. Michelle, come on over. <laughs> Michelle, come over. <laughs> so, I'll just finish it with another wee bit of parmesan. Now, I know um, usually in the restaurant, if it was a restaurant, from the standard, you would finish it off with a soft uh, poached egg. Yes. And um, some, some rocket as well, which gives it the look. But, you know, that is... Yeah, you would garnish it with, with the... Yeah, I mean, in the restaurant environment, you've got to sort of, I think, elevate the, the, the food slightly, you know, because yeah. a lot of it is in the eye. Uh -huh. It's going to taste the same, yes, but so what we would do is, we, this dish, you could serve with a soft poached egg. Is that a recipe card, isn't it? Yes, it is a recipe card. And, and then a few you know, sprinkling of rock Absolutely, and, and it would be really kind of simple to do as well. So, so if you get any top tips as to the perfect poached egg? The perfect poached egg, now this was given to me by Slash of Guns N' Roses, oh, by the way. This is, this is it. This is the bizarre one, I know. You heard it here, you heard it here. <laughs> and of all the people in all the world to tell you how to poach an egg, but um, you use 6% vinegar or less, okay, in your poaching liquid. That you will always have it, that will always set the egg. And you probably, yep. and hopefully, you won't taste the vinegar because I know a lot of people don't like using vinegar because they think you can taste the vinegar. Yeah. Six percent or less, and if you can be bothered measuring out six percent vinegar to the ratio of water, well, then I you're sadder well, <laughs> than me. I know six percent because I use apple cider vinegar. It's one of the store companies yeah, that I definitely. recommend. And in a pot of water, I just glug one glug. Is that a, exactly is that good enough? A measure? tablespoon. A tablespoon. A tablespoon. Yeah. A tablespoon or a. But the ultimate key, the ultimate key to a fresh poached egg and like all egg cookery is, uh, is, a, is the freshness of the egg. So the fresher the egg, yes. they'll always, you will always have a perfectly poached egg, like a fried egg. You know when you crack an egg into your pan yeah. and the white just sort of runs over, yeah. all, over the, all over the pan? That's, that's an egg that's not, you know, it's, it's perfectly edible, but it's not super fresh. Yeah. So what, what they, they call it the double yolk, so you get the yolk, but the white should set with the yolk as well. If you can get that, I've noticed that, John. Actually, yeah. It should be super fresh, and that that that's what you're looking for. So always select the egg with the longest shelf life. 
Okay, and how would you know that? Is it just um, just by looking at the back, looking at the dates, yeah. Okay, oh, so check here. Oh. Um, fresh fork, whatever you think. Just oh, a teeny bit of salt, oh, pepper, yep. a teeny bit more parmesan there. Okay. Both all optional, and uh, let's have a wee taste and see what we find. I bet you're all jealous now. <laughs> this is going to be lunch and our dinner. Alistair's mm. looking okay tonight. <laughs> what mm. do we think? It's lovely. Yeah, nice. I think it's mm. nicely delicately seasoned. Oh, beautiful. The flavour's kind of right through the rice. Yeah. Veggies are still kind of al dente. Yeah. Perfect. Really creamy and really, really um, flavoursome actually. And dinner for four or five for, you know, a couple of pounds really, you know. I mean, if you, Absolutely. If you, if you count your, your parmesan, you know, as a store cupboard item, then it's, it's pennies, you know. But yes, you do need parmesan. Yeah, and Otherwise, it is pennies. Absolutely, and, I, and I'm all for that, you know, and, and it's the whole reason why I say kind of reduce it to uh, to kind of just five key ingredients, especially in recipe high five, because it's all about that, isn't it? Yeah. It's all about efficiency, uh, eating healthy, but you're not having to use hundreds and thousands of ingredients, and you can produce something fantastic and healthy and amazing. Yeah. Um, and at no time at all. At no time at all, and it's kind of pretty cheap as well. Cool. High five. But high five. <laughs> Woo! But listen, thank you so much, everybody, for joining us live. Um, so pleased. Thank you, John, for coming into my kitchen. Oh, cool. We'll do it again. We'll do it again, yeah. Right, you heard it here. That's evidence. I'm holding you to it. Okay. You need to come back. If there is anything out there that you would like John to demonstrate, please comment below. Sure. It means that I can encourage him to come back in um, and do some more demonstrations, which would be absolutely amazing. Yeah, cool. But um, yeah, thank you so much. That is kind of recipe high five. John's Primavera risotto. Yeah, Recipe high five style. So thank yeah, yeah. you so much. And have a great um, day. Have a fantastic day, everybody. And we'll see you all again soon. Bye. Bye.